everyone. My name is Steve Messler, and for about a decade, this was my job. Somewhere. Well, my job was to bobsled. <laughs> and I, there we go. So this was my job for about a decade. And for those of you who don't remember the amazing, awesome, incredible movie Cool Runnings, uh, let me explain to you what bobsled is. Uh, my job was to run and sit for a minute. That was it. That was my whole job. Uh, <laughs> I, no, really, that was my thing, running and sitting. Uh, today, uh, and yes, I did know the Jamaicans. Uh, today, I wear a relatively more comfortable, yet more, a little less flexible suit, uh, but of course, over my bobsled suit, because you just never know when you're going to need it. Uh, today, my probably, probably my biggest problem is that I come running into a room and then like sit really close to everybody when we get to a meeting. So those are my current struggles. How do you mentor 25,000 youth with some of our world's best athletes from Paralympians to Olympic gold medalists to NFL players and allow them to connect within a, a system that can, that can replicate oftentimes life-saving techniques by giving them nothing more than this? Because that's what's happening across North America today. <clears throat> our athletes are giving back, our athletes are getting engaged, and we're using those athletes that are in the midst of their careers, solving a, lot of, a big challenge that we've always had with engaging athletes. Now, to listen to a little bit about how we actually got there, uh, we'll go back to right outside my training residence back in 2009. I was training for the, for the Olympics back in Vancouver, uh, and I was outside of my house in Calgary, and I was on the phone with my sister, who was getting her PhD, she's a lot smarter than me. Uh, she was getting her PhD in education, and she had been teaching at this public school in Brooklyn, at a low-income school in Brooklyn. And she was explaining to me the stuff that her kids was, were going through and what she was seeing. And she was seeing that 25% of her kids were proficient in reading and math, and her as a teacher and her fellow teachers were less experienced and had less tools than their wealthier peers. Then she would talk a little bit more about her kids, and they would, she would talk to me about those kids would, you know, oftentimes be coming from single-parent fa families where their parent would have a lower education attainment and often would be working multiple jobs. So these kids would come home, and instead of getting help on their, home, help on their homework, they would have to take care of their brothers or sisters and babysit. And they didn't really have anybody around them who could show them that there was a different world, show them that if they worked hard, they can get better. And, you know, really simply put, her kids were starting a 100-meter race 40 meters behind. And not only that, instead of wearing track spikes, they were wearing Crocs on their shoes. And we wanted to do something about that because that really resonated with me. I had done what a whole lot of athletes in this room have done before, a lot of people in this room have done before. I would go and I would visit a classroom and I would give a talk and I'd get all pumped up and kids would cheer and they would go crazy and then I'd leave. And then I'd never see those kids again. And we knew that we could have a better impact than that. Because at the end of the day, kids, especially those living in poverty, need a relationship with the people that they're gonna learn from in order to learn. So those one-off visits, there's so many, there's only a few things available to an athlete back when I was competing that actually let you give back in a positive way. And those ways were putting your name on something, uh, going and visiting a school like that, or taking a trip to a village in Africa and helping. Those one-off things did not make a difference and they didn't resonate with me. Taking, making impact and making change is glacial. It takes a long time. We wanted to show kids it just wasn't two and a half weeks of glory on television that there was a process to get there. Now, a lot of us have struggled in school or had struggles in life, and I'm going to tell you about somebody I know, and his name is Chris. Chris was an eighth grader who had such a bad speech impediment that he was getting bullied and picked on by kids so badly that he decided that he wasn't going to speak outside of his home for two years. Chris didn't say anything. And right before this picture was taken, Chris did something that made his teacher weep uncontrollably right in the middle of class. Now, Chris comes from a place called Camden, New Jersey. So Camden's right across the river from Philadelphia in the US. Camden is riddled with high crime and poverty. And if you're a citizen of Camden, you're six times more likely to be exposed to a violent crime than anywhere else in the country. Now, we had matched Chris's class with this guy, Lex Gillette. Lex is a Paralympic silver medalist who lost his sight right around the same age as Chris. He's a long jumper who's gone on to win multiple Paralympic silver medals, 
set world records and graduate from university. We put somebody in Chris's class that these kids could look up to and could learn from on a consistent basis. So on a monthly basis, on a regular basis, Lex would be sending his videos to his kids, and those kids would start sending videos back. <clears throat> and one day, a shy student walked up to his teacher, Ms. Martinez, in class and said to his teacher, I want to send Lex something. And she said, excuse me? He said, I want to send Lex something. So Ms. Martinez pulled Chris around to the edge of the corner and started her video camera as she started to cry. And Chris spoke his first words in school for the first time in two years to send Lex what perseverance meant to him. That's the way that kids form relationships these days. They form them through technology. You heard it right before me. You're going to continue to hear it. So as athletes, as sportsmen, that's what we've decided to do is connect through technology and give kids a voice. Not just tell them what to do, but give them an opportunity to share that back to Lex. Today, Chris is a thriving student in the 10th grade. He's got a friend group. He's still shy. And he's still living in Camden. But now he's found a way to engage with his community and make an impact on his community. And I couldn't be prouder of him. So as my sister and I were still on that phone back to Calgary, we decided that we wanted to actually do something that would make a difference. So we adopted a bunch of classrooms and teachers applied, eight in America and one in Canada, and we wanted to form real relationships with kids. So I started sending videos from where I was in Austria on, my, on the way to the Olympic Games, and kids started sending videos back, and they started telling me about how inspired they were and how excited they were. And then we decided that we would do more than that. Because we didn't start it to start a nonprofit. We just started it because we wanted to make a difference before I was done retiring. But all of a sudden, athletes started coming up to me and saying, well, I want to I wanna do that. I want to get involved. So since then, we've had tons of athletes get involved because, you know what, at the end of the day, over 51% of our kids, or 51% of our population as in June 2017, is online. It's 3.8 billion people. 3.8 billion people that are not only connected to the internet, or Taylor Swift, or that song, Despacito. Come on, no one knows that one? <laughs> but they're connected to each other. So over 100 athletes have now gotten involved, from Olympic champions, to Paralympians, to Olympic hopefuls, to student athletes, to NFL players, have gotten involved, and we match them with over 10 classrooms each. And they communicate on a yearly basis with their kids. And they're mentoring classrooms, and you know what happens? all of a sudden, those teachers start getting engaged. And remember how I talked about my sister being at a school that had less resources for teachers? Well, all of a sudden, teachers started having their growth mindset changed. So we started a program that actually would develop teachers. And we've seen teachers like Brent Nietzsche from Brooklyn, New York, who's credited Olympic athletes with saving his career. Who would have thought that an athlete connecting with kids would save a teaching career? All of a sudden, the, start, the, the crocs started coming off of these kids as we started to go. <clears throat> Today's programming costs less than 5% of the traditional one-on-one -on -one mentoring programs that we know. We've partnered with NGOs. We've worked with universities to engage Ivy League students to be mentors. We've partnered with NFL teams to get pro football players to be mentors. We've partnered with corporate social responsibility programs to put athlete mentors into the furthest northern regions of Canada's indigenous communities into the streets and into the urban areas of, the, of, of America. Today's ecosystem has reached over 25,000 kids and we're scaling up. We're, time to, we're, we're starting to go now. We've created this virtual parasocial relationship. Now, a parasocial relationship is how you get really excited and happy when your football team wins and you get really really sad when your football team loses, or how you get really sad when your, game of Thrones, your favorite Game of Thrones character is killed. We've actually made that parasocial relationship real, so now that football player knows these kids and communicates with these kids and cheers for them when they're succeeding and gives them an extra cheer when they're failing. Lex Gillette, as I mentioned before, has mentored over 1,500 kids within our system. But not only somebody like Chris who we're giving a voice to, we're changing the culture of school. 
We've seen reductions in bullying by 63%. 99% of our teachers tell us that goal setting is improved in kids. We're seeing improvements in grades, attendance, growth mindset. We're changing the fabric of how, culture, of how classrooms work and we're putting an Olympic mindset into the classroom, into these areas where these kids need it the most. But Chris isn't the only one that we want to affect. Our goal is to reach millions and millions of kids and connect them with athletes and mentors and build the culture in their classrooms. And that's why I'm here today. <laughs> I am here today because we're looking for corporate partners and foundations to put funding behind us to secure our operations. I'm here today because we're looking for tech companies to put technology into our schools and give them internet. And we're here today because we want to partner with Olympic committees and pro sports leagues to utilize their greatest assets, their athletes that are still on the field of play today and connect them with kids around the world. Millions of Chris, kids like Chris need support from our athletes and we need rooms like this to get behind us. So come with us on this journey, let's go. And if you're like me, you believe every kid deserves a champion. Thank you for having us here today.